they say that you can't polish a turd, but how about if that turd had a heart of beating gold with a Seiko NH34 GMT movement inside of it? You may have seen my review on the Corjo GMT that I ordered from AliExpress. Uh, to be honest, it was a piece of shit. But I'm here to fix that. I've ordered a load of parts and it's time to rebuild the turd into something wonderful. So here we go. This is all that's left of the Corjo. Let's get building. And through the power of editing, the watch is reassembled just in time for us to take off the strap. First thing, it's worth to get a good spring bar tool. The one I'm using is from Gekota. Uh, Bergeon also make a great one. Buy a spring bar tool once, buy a good one, and it will last you for life. So, a little cushion here, which I like to use just to rest watches on top of, and the Bergeon ball comes out to pull the case back off. This one didn't need the die, um, but if you do find one that is particularly tight, then you will need to use a proper die on the case back with this style. Push the uh, crown release just there from position one on an NH34, 4R36, 4R35, and just tap the movement down into the movement holder. Normally I'd use a Bergeon dial protector when removing the hands. This time they don't fit because the fourth hand means it sits close to the dial. Couldn't get it underneath, so back to the paper here. And uh, yeah, one pinch and all the hands are off. No issues at all. Next up, removing the dial. Can normally do it with fingers. Uh, it's only a friction fit with the Seiko movements, but if not, there is a couple of grooves and you can get a small plastic tool in there and just pop it off. Back into the movement holder, here's the two dials. We've got the old one on the right, the new one on the left. It's about getting these pins now cut off so we can match and get it installed to fit the Seiko NH. So I like these flat nose pliers. Normally don't leave uh, much behind, so you don't need to file down. If you do take the pins off when you're getting your dial ready for your movement, and there is a raised edge, then it's worth to file it down. Otherwise you can run into issues with the clearances and the dial will sit a little bit proud. Anyway, pushing that in, now it's all about cleaning, trying to get any dust and dirt off of it. I tend to use a variety of uh, cotton buds, but very gently to not leave residue. Then the air blower, and of course for stubborn dirt, uh, nothing beats a little bit of Bergeon Rodico. Right, we need to talk about quality of parts. When you're building a watch or modding a watch, you can buy parts super cheap. For example, hands could be, you know, one, two dollars on AliExpress. Or you can go to a, a premium website and pay a lot of money for what looks like the same part in the pictures that you'll see online. The quality varies massively when you're buying watch parts. I tend to use places like Nomoki, uh, DLW, Seiko Mods. There's a few other really good reputable websites to buy online. And the parts here are expensive sometimes three or four times more expensive than what looks like the same thing on AliExpress. If you're gonna buy from AliExpress, be prepared that some of the times you're gonna buy it, it's gonna be really bad quality, you're gonna to have to throw it away, buy it again, and that could mean waiting another four or five weeks. So you can do it on a budget of AliExpress, but if you want ultimate quality, ultimate finishing, um, you'll have to take a look and obviously pay the premium for that. A good example is the case on this build. Uh, it came with a lot of dust inside of it. There was metal filings in the threads, just tiny, tiny little shavings of metal, but it's stuff that you don't want anywhere near a mechanical watch movement. I had to spend a lot of time with the Rodico, cleaning it out, dusting, cleaning it out, blowing more air into it. And uh, you will find that if you buy higher quality to start with, you don't have to do things like this. So it's just worth to bear in mind. Anyway, on with the build. Next thing that needs to be done is to rotate the movement forward until we're going to find midnight. Uh, obviously we have a date window here, so we need to pay particular attention and try and click it just over to the next day and then not move it any further and that will be ready for setting the hands. Here we are at 12 o'clock, so aka midnight. So setting the hands here, obviously uh, four hands rather than the usual three. This is the first time I've done a GMT build, but principle is exactly the same, just with the one extra hand. Um, talking of tools, I use the uh, hand pushers that you'll see here to get everything lined up. I have tried the spring-loaded ones and I find them actually not as easy. I prefer the, uh, I think the more old school way here, just using the hand pushers and a little bit of uh, pegwood just to uh, nudge the alignment as I come down and ensure we get things bang onto midnight. So this one's starting with the GMT hand here. There we go, just a final squeeze, just to make sure that it's uh, fully seated, everything's looking good. Next on with the hour hand, same thing, just dropping it 
over the pinion and getting the pusher down and the pegwood just to get it aligned and once it's looking in line nice confident squeeze get it all flat lined up onto the minute hand next so yeah you've seen this before same again just building the stack up nicely making sure everything's looking good there we are final squeeze on that now it looks like it's aligned just to fully seat that and I've been checking on the loop uh, just off camera each time just to make sure everything is seated clearly uh, seconds hand this is the hardest one this was the third take and popping it in and then as soon as I think it's in giving it a quick check make sure it is fully seated and uh, yeah that looks good but I have got an issue with interference the minute hand and seconds hand are a bit too close minute hand is slightly bent up so using this Bergeon dial protector just very gently just put a slight bend just to open up some clearance there and there we go that's looking much better now so we're not going to have any hands touching any other hands as they go around lots of cleaning to do now um, I do clean and dust as much as I can before doing this work but still somehow dust and dirt manages to end up everywhere so lots more cleaning with the blower tool and also with the Rodico as well just to get this dial nice and clean so I didn't film all of this but yeah there was plenty more um, cleaning of the dial before casing now turning the movement uh, upside down straight into the case some of the more expensive cases will hold the movement nicely with an interference fit in this case um, you'll find that the case back actually is what pushes down on the movement and secures it uh, and obviously the crown is used as the alignment method um, if you like so run that in with the Bergeon ball and then uh, here we are taking a look and uh, just seeing how everything is going to fit together and making sure everything is looking good and it is looking much better than it was so here we are crown and stem cutting so I want to cut the stem so I'm measuring from one of the lower points of the spring compression down to the base of the case and 4.32 millimeters is roughly there or thereabouts what I want to cut off so release the uncut stem now and here we are pop the crown off pin vice is an excellent tool for this um, I haven't found anything better so highly recommended I generally mark up with tape where I need to cut and I did use side cutters these look massive these bolt cutters um, but it's the only thing that gets a really clean cut that I've found so far and doesn't damage the tool side cutters tend to damage very easily when you're cutting stems anyway uh, off camera just filed the any rough edges off there and put the crown back on and reinstall it into the movement and insert and here we are case back on just to slave it for a second just so that I can check all of the functionality um, and very important because like I said in this the case back is holding the movement in okay the footage in this part sucked so I'll just interject quickly putting the crown back in really important to check the function of the watch to make sure the crown stem is not too short too long not just the seating position but setting the date setting the time making sure everything operates exactly as it should before I'm going to make this permanent and put the Loctite in and secure the crown to the stem for good. So with everything tested and being happy with the length of the cut stem, a little bit of Loctite just on the end um, and that will just hold the crown and the stem together. So there we are, winding the crown down onto the stem for the final time, removing any residue with the gloves. The advantage of this is I can just chuck the gloves straight in the bin and then allowing a little bit of time for the Loctite to set before the final install here and uh, making sure everything's nicely aligned and that it screws down nicely and having the movement loose here so it can adjust automatically in its rotation position to sit naturally perfectly central with the crown and stem assembly now installed here we are case back on and uh, once this is on just slave there i want to check on the time grapher just see do we need to do any regulation and the answer is no with this one, which is a nice surprise. Normally, I tend to find the sacred movements rock up at about plus 12 seconds per day. Uh, this one is running absolutely beautifully. No need to touch it. Slightly high beat error, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think worth regulating in this instance. So I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. Uh, lubing up the case back gas gasket, I need to get one of the nice tools where it rubs a, a fin film over the top. But for now, just pulling it through my glove, getting a nice film of... Uh, of silicone grease on there 
rubbing off any excess with the cotton bud and final case back install going on now. Burgeon on ball just in there to get it seated nicely and then I do need to actually consider bolting my press into the desk. Uh, it's not the best, this is the biggest die I've got. It does fit but it's not the perfect fit. I could do it one size up um, to get a better fit on this but it was enough to get it nice and tight and ensure good water resistance and good seating on that gasket. Here's a loom shot. The only thing that I'm going to say I will improve on this build or would do next time would be the hour and minute hand. The loom is a little bit weaker than that of the dial and the seconds hand. Um, it's still a massive improvement over where we were with the Courgeot, but it's the one thing I'll improve. Let's take a look at the final piece. So overall, really happy with this watch. Um, repurposing the movement has fixed all the issues. It's a beautiful watch now, um, but more importantly, fixed the issues. The winding on the crown in and out of the thread is perfect. It's not wobbly, it's aligned, it's straight, it's smooth, it's exactly as desired. The GMT hand is aligned properly with the hour hand, so that's not sitting in the middle of nowhere. The case finishing is consistent on this, and uh, overall it's a watch that someone could be proud of. It's not going to me, it's going to one of my best friends who lives over in New York at the moment, uh, who never seems to know the time in Canada, so the GMT will be perfect for him. So uh, yeah, overall, I think a big success on this one. Yes or no, this is your last chance, no beating around the bush. So it's obviously not economical to go out and buy watches from AliExpress for the sake of stripping them down, changing everything apart from the movement. But if you do buy a budget watch from AliExpress, and then you end up in a position where it doesn't meet your expectation, you've got QC issues, um, and you were to try and sell it on the used market, a lot of the time with the very cheap watches on AliExpress, you're only gonna be getting back half that value anyway, which is, in this case, pretty similar to the cost of an NH34 movement. So it's a nice option to have, to be able to mod or play around or, or rebuild a different watch if you get a cheap disappointment from AliExpress. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave me any feedback, any comments. Um, I'm obviously not a watchmaker. I've done quite a few mod builds in the past um, for friends, family, um, and as a hobby. But I'm always looking to learn new tips and techniques, especially placing the second hand on the pinion. That was still the third attempt in this video that you saw. Uh, don't worry, it didn't slot on first time. I'm definitely not that good. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching all the way through to the end. If you've made it this far, uh, please like, subscribe for more watch-related content, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.